this is the second part of the my my video about the brave new world part two is soil and green what we are going to eat so insects are extremely protein rich and this is this propaganda teach us that it could serve as a sustainable alternative to common animal products such as beef and pork and uh, some health professionals some medical doctors expect to see more of it in the coming years so it will be algae uh, seaweed beans legumes nuts grains and cereals lab grown meat false bananas and of course insects so growing insects it really take not so not so long to grow uh, insects and uh, much more easy because you can produce this insect farm with very low investment you don't need grass you don't need f f farming uh, land it's uh, just easy really easy and this uh, looks so that it will be just grow this area of uh, production of food insect uh, eating insects also already now web uh, web grown meat is available which is uh, with some additives resembles beef or pork or chicken but we are talking about the some extremes for example this person Richard Dawkins and he promotes uh, growing of uh, human flesh in, labo in laboratory grown human flesh he is a logic is such that if we consume beef or pork or poultry then it is not so uh, optimized for our health our set of amu our amino, uh, amino acids is different so better to grow human flesh in a laboratory and then uh, so this human flesh will fit us uh, the best this is this is his idea just next uh, next step would be just promoting cannibalism and then growing some human organs or some some connective tissues and this would be human flesh in some uh, countries on market uh, you can buy a uh, human flesh already now the the uh, in africa people call it bush feed bush meat but it is actually human flesh human flesh you can buy it in some african countries for example and not so far the, the time when we will get human meat which is from some hu real humans so and then it is you see we can you can buy in in, in future you probably can buy some organs and and, and brain and etc what would be the consequences it's again just beginning and it's, it looks uh, to some uh, medical professionals uh, as a great idea but if we look, uh, what what is uh, what are the danger of this cannibalism? If we can look at Papua New Guinea, in some tribes in Papua New Guinea are cannibals, and already was long uh, known that they develop in time so-called Kuru disease. Kuru disease is it's actually uh, it was it took quite a, a while to understand how it works, and it seems so that. Uh, brain degenerate uh, uh, during this uh, kuru disease because uh, special misfolded proteins uh, which name prions prions can penetrate the brain <clears throat> and then uh, accumulation of these proteins misfolded proteins will cause uh, the brain to deteriorate these proteins work as infection what is in the cells when they get to the to the brain they uh, interfere with uh, proteins which are already in the brain and then turn other proteins which are functionally uh, functional and uh, folded correctly they turn them into misfolded proteins at least this this was the explanation but we know that about shrinking of the brain already from alzheimer disease alzheimer disease it's actually the same uh, disease that uh, sh b b the brain is shrinking cognitive abilities uh, are reduced sacrificed and then why it is happening so why it is happening and 
uh, there is uh, recently uh, opinion became such that Alzheimer disease is just type 3 diabetes. Type 3 diabetes and appears uh, when uh, insulin resistance uh, develops in, in uh, your body. So people who are diabetics or they got type 2 diabetics, they often uh, develop uh, so-called type 3 diabetes, which is Alzheimer disease. And treatment for the Alzheimer disease, uh, uh, that this medical professional, there is some remedies, but they actually don't work, don't work. Uh, the, as explanation of this Alzheimer disease, uh, medical professionals proposed accumulation of amyloid plaques. Amyloid plaques, it is the same misfolded proteins, which in case of Kuru disease, are, are, these are prions, but here, this like, uh, are other proteins which are also misfolded, they also accumulate in the brain, and medical professionals explain Alzheimer's disease by accumulation of these amyloid proteins, misfolded proteins. Here at this slide, you see that how they, uh, they uh, that's explain accumulation of these proteins in between the neurons, and eventually neurons stop to work, and, uh, and brain is suffering, brain is uh, in mode of uh, that's, uh, degradation. It's not only uh, amyloids what what can accumulate in our body uh, in the body uh, of humans with age. It is also so-called lipofuscin. What is the difference between amyloids and lipofuscin? Amyloid are misfolded proteins. Uh, lipofuscins are a, a result of reaction of protein with uh, lipids with oxidized fatty acids. So. And unfortunately for us uh, uh, that we don't produce enzyme which can break down the, this reaction products of uh, reaction of the oxidized fatty acids and proteins. And then uh, in uh, healthy cells or long-living cells, this uh, junk material, lipofuscin, accumulates. And if uh, uh, there, is, uh, there are some iron uh, ions, then this lipofuscin turns into pigment. Here, here it is schematically represented that accumulation of this lipofuscin and uh, with iron ions can go in skin. skin, skin. And these so-called uh, age spots develop in elders quite normally. And then uh, uh, this is just indication how much junk uh, material, uh, rubbish, accumulates in body of the elders. Why? Because some fatty acids can be oxidized here, and then they react with proteins. And what kind of uh, uh, fatty acids can be oxidized? It is polyunsaturated fatty acids, which we humans consume a lot from so-called vegetable oils. Okay, that's all. Part three will be next part of the of the video.